Hey everyone, I'm back with a little screen screencast for us um, where we're going to go over how we can calculate two pretty important things, pH and pOH. So, let's dive right in. First, remember that we have to know how we define things if we're going to have any hope for how we calculate them. So, pH is nothing more than a, a log base 10 measurement of the acid particle. And that acid particle we can write as either H+, plus, which is essentially protons, or we could also write it in terms of what really is there, which water interacts with this hydrogen ion to produce hydronium ion. Okay, So that's how we measure pH. pOH is a very similar measurement, except it's not dealing with the acid particle. It's a log base 10 measurement of the base particle, hydroxide. Okay, so first you need to think about, well, what are we dealing with? Whenever you're doing any of these calculations, if you're dealing with an acid, you're probably going to be determining the pH. If you're dealing with a base, you may also have to find the pH, but sometimes you have to go through finding pOH first, which means it sure would be nice if there was a relationship between them, and it turns out that there is. There's a relationship between pH and pOH in that the sum of the two values always adds up to 14. And as we get into class next week, we'll talk about why this relationship is. And it has a lot to do with the auto dissociation constant for water, Kw, and the equilibrium process that is true for any acid-base reaction. But for right now, let's just understand that there is a relationship between pH and pOH. And that is that the sum of the two always adds up to 14. Now, you might come into a situation where you have to almost reverse engineer a pH problem. Meaning, you might be given a pH and say, well, based upon that, what's the hydronium ion concentration? Well, just remember that that is just going to be 10 raised to the power of the pH value. And likewise, if you're asked to solve for the concentration of OH minus, and you're given the pOH value, you can just take 10 to the negative pOH. So this screen has some pretty important relationships that you'll use pretty frequently. So make sure that these equations look comfortable to you, and we're going to apply them in the context of two sample problems. Here we go. So here's our first problem. Uh, the question is asking us to calculate the pH of a particular solution of known concentration. Now the thing that you need to think about is, well, what am I dealing with? I'm dealing with a known concentration of an acid. The next thing you need to ask yourself is, well, what's the formula of the acid? So for, for sulfuric acid, it's H2SO4. And the reason why that matters is because we have to first identify the acid as a strong acid or a weak acid. And in this case, we should say, well, hey, this one is a strong acid. It's one of the strong acids we talked about in class. And the second piece is we need to know its formula so we know how much H plus ions that each one of the acid particles produces when it dissociates. In the case of sulfuric acid, it's something called diprotic. It produces two hydrogen ions for every one sulfuric acid molecule. And that two to one ratio is going to come into play when we calculate pH. Because fundamentally what we have to understand is, first if it's strong, remember that that means that it completely dissociates. So it favors the product side. And if we have a 0.150 molar solution of sulfuric acid, we effectively have twice as concentrated of a solution in terms of hydrogen ion, so 0 0.300 molar. Once we've done this analysis, then we can easily choose our equation, which is just the pH equation, and it's negative log base 10 of our hydrogen ion concentration, which is 0 0.300. We plug that into our calculator and we get an answer of 0 0.523, which makes sense. We would expect a pH well below 7 when we're dealing with an acid, and it's reasonably strong, so it should be pretty close to 0. So that's an example dealing with finding the pH for an acid. Well, let's look at how the situation changes when we're dealing with a base. So in this problem, we have a 1 liter solution that happens to contain a certain mass of sodium hydroxide. Now you notice they don't give us the concentration in this problem. So the first thing that we need to be thinking about is if I don't have a concentration, I'm going to have to find it at some point. And the second thing we need to think about is, well, what are we dealing with? Sodium hydroxide, that should ring a bell as a strong base. 
Okay, and the strong base has the formula of NaOH. When it dissociates in water, it will form sodium ions and hydroxide ions. So this, in this case, we're dealing with a one-to-one -one ratio. That makes things pretty easy. The harder part with this problem is recognizing that we're going to have to take this mass and this volume and find molarity. So let's do that in green. Remember that molarity is moles per unit volume in liters. So the first thing we have to do is find moles because the liters is directly given. To find moles, we take our mass, which is 2 grams of sodium hydroxide. We find the molar mass of sodium hydroxide, which is essentially 40 grams per mole. And that gives us a value of 0 0.05 moles of sodium hydroxide. Now from here, we can find our molarity. Molarity equals 0 0.05 divided by 1. So it's 0 0.05 molar. Now what we have to remember is that if sodium hydroxide is 0 0.05 molar, that one-to-one -one ratio means that every other ion, and the only other ion we really are concerned with is hydroxide, is also of that concentration. Now at this point we need to pause because it can be tempting to just think that we can use this straight up in our pH equation. We can't. We have to first find the pOH based upon this, and then we can go back and find the pH. So the way we're going to do this solution is we're going to use pOH because that's what we have the information for. So that's the negative log base 10 of our hydroxide ion concentration, which is 0 0.05. And in this case, we get a value of 1.30. Now, the final step will be to remember the relationship between pH and pOH. Remember that pH plus pOH equals 14. So since I know the pOH, I can just find the pH by taking 14 minus my pOH value. And that gives me a pH value of 12.70. These were two quick examples. I'd like you to try problems 1 through 5 from the assignment that's on Schoology over the weekend. And we'll talk about any questions that you have. Hope this was helpful. Have a great weekend, you guys.